Hello, my friends. Here I am for the evening reading of the Bible as we read through the Bible together in 2023. We are in 2 Corinthians, and today I will read chapter 7 and 8. I was almost finished with it, and I made a mistake. I made a big mistake. So I scrapped it. And I'm starting all over. Ever since my last video, which was two or three, maybe four hours ago, I don't know how long ago, I have been cooking. And my back is extremely angry with me. It hurts. And this chair is, I mean, it's not comfortable. This chair is good for 20 or 30 minutes, and that's it. I've got the nice big swivel rocker recliner in the living room and nice big couch, nice big love seat. But with my back, if I sit down on them, I can't get up. <laughs> so they, brand new living room set hadn't been used hardly at all. And this, this chair hurts bad, but I got to sit down somewhere and I'm not going to lay down all day. So I'm sitting here. But let me hush my rambling and read to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. And don't forget to clean your spirit or keep it clean. Perfecting holiness and the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of, of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. That's hard to say in honesty. Do you joy exceedingly in your tribulation? I should. Usually I don't. I do ask for forgiveness, though. And, and several times I have actually prayed and thanked God for the tribulation I was in. For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side without were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. That's kind of how I feel ever since I got up here. When I came into this town, I'm in. My flesh had no rest, but I was troubled on every side. Without were fightings, and within was fears. Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down comforted me by the coming of himself. Because nobody else came. Nobody else wants to come to this place. Verse 7 of chapter 7 in 2 Corinthians and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoiced the more. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I perceived that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, 
but that ye sorrowed to repentance. And hallelujah for that, Lord. Hallelujah for that. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. And he's talking about eternal death. For behold, this selfsame thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge, and all these things, and all things, ye have approved yourselves to be dear in this manner. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for this cause that had done the wrong, nor for the cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Therefore, we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joyed we for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. For if I have boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we spake all things to you, in truth, even so our boasting, which I made before Titus, is found a truth. And his inward affection is more abundant toward you, whilst he remembereth the obedience of you all, how with fear and trembling ye received him. I rejoice, therefore, that I have confidence in you in all things. Chapter 8 of 2 Corinthians. Moreover, brethren, we do you, to wit, of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. When I can't sit up anymore, y'all going to listen to me share the word when I lay down all the time. I can't hardly sit anymore. I rejoice, therefore, that I have confidence in you in all things. Chapter 8. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves. Y'all know what I forgot? Two days ago was Kitty Callie's birthday, and I forgot all about it till today. I had it on uh, my things to do calendar on my phone app, and I even had reminders set for two or three days in advance so I would remember and go buy her some special treats, and those reminders didn't go off, and I didn't remember until this morning. She's not mad at me, though. <laughs> she stays right there. She's right there. She's always nearby. I think she don't even know what her birthday is. Last year, though, for her birthday, I bought her some catnip, and, and I got a video on here that I made. She was rolling in that stuff and acting like a crazy loco kitty 
running and laying in it and rolling over and getting up and running some more. It was funny. And I did a video after she'd already been doing that two or three minutes. And I grabbed the uh, phone and did a video of her acting goofy. It's still on here somewhere. But I guess she got too old for her birthday. She lay in there sleeping. She sleeps a lot now. Let me hush and finish. Praying is with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take up on the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. And so much that we desired Titus that he, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, and faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence. And we need to be diligent, y'all. Seriously. We need to be diligent. And in your love to us, we see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye, through his poverty, might be rich. And herein, I, and he's not talking about material wealth necessarily, so don't think if you run out and profess to be a Christian, you're going to, bam, turn into a millionaire. That, that ain't going to happen. Not just because you became a Christian. And herein I give my advice. For this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance out, also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye be burdened, but by an equality <clears throat> that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, and there may be equality. Bam, y'all, that's some good stuff right there. As it is written, <clears throat> He that hath gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed, he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not that only, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us this grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready of your ready mind, avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us, providing for honest things not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you, 
whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. Or our brethren be inquired of, they are the messengers of the church and the glory of Christ. Wherefore show ye to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. And, uh, well, that's a short uh, chapter. I'll read it too. Chapter 9 of Second Corinthians. For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for us, for me, to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready, lest haply if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we that we say not ye should be ashamed in the same confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty whereof ye had noticed therefore had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as covetousness. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sore, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. <clears throat> Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God for the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whiles by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your profession, subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men, and by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you. Bam, y'all, this is some good stuff. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. There you go. That's, I think, three chapters in Second Corinthians. We finished through chapter 9 of Second Corinthians. That's it for today, y'all. I probably won't, but I might go to bed early tonight. <laughs> I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Y'all watch the earlier videos I made, especially the last one. Love you. Talk to y'all later.